Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The House will come to order. In the absence of clergy, let us pause for a moment of silence. Visitors are invited to join the members in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Quorum being present, the clerk will read the Journal of Monday, May 2nd. Mr. Morelli. Mr. Speaker, I move to dispense with the further reading of the Journal of Sunday, of Monday, May 2nd, and that the same stand approved. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon, uh, colleagues and friends. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed a little bit of a break, and those who celebrated holidays, I uh, hope you enjoyed those. Um, in just a minute, we're going to have... Uh, we have a number of exciting things going on uh, this afternoon in the chambers, but uh, before I get to our schedule, let me just note a couple of uh, important uh, dates that have happened on this day, May 3rd, in the history of, uh, of, uh, of our times. On this day in 1802, Washington, D.C. was incorporated as a city. The U.S. Capitol had previously been referred to as the Federal District of Columbia since its approval and creation in 1790. On this day in 1919, Mrs. J.A. Hoagland and Ethel Hodgetts became the first passengers in the United States to fly passenger air service. The flight flew from New York to Atlantic City aboard the Aeromarine Model 50S flying boat uh, flown by pilot Robert Hewitt. And on this day in 1936, New York Yankee center fielder and future Hall of Famer Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper, made his debut in Major League Baseball. So. We're going to accomplish a few major league things this afternoon ourselves, uh, including, uh, let me uh, just say that we're going to start. Members have on their desks a main calendar. There are 29 new bills on the calendar, beginning with calendar number 495, concluding with calendar number 523. After any introductions in housekeeping, our first order of business will be to take up three resolutions to seat our new members. We will then take the opportunity to, intru to introduce uh, Alice Cancel, Jamie Williams, and Ronald Castorina, Jr. Uh, after that, we will take up new bills on consent, those that I identified. And then our principal work of the day will be to take up a series of bills associated with the domestic violence package, including a resolution by Ms. Jean-Pierre. We may otherwise take up bills from the calendar as time permits. I'd also like to remind members that we will be finishing in a timely manner this afternoon, as the intern mock session will begin at 5 p.m., promptly this evening. Uh, I note that the um, minority will have a uh, Republican conference once our work is concluded. Anything else comes up, I'll obviously make those announcements from the chair. So with that as a general outline, Mr. Speaker, uh, any introductions and housekeeping will be appropriate at this time. Thank you, Mr. Morelli. We will have uh, two housekeeping agendas on the motion by Mr. Magnarelli, page 9, calendar number 56, bill number 1205A, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Godfrey, page 49, calendar number 520, bill number 9747, amendments are received and adopted. We do have introductions. Ms. Weinstein for an introduction. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I uh, would like you to welcome a number of visitors we have here today from the New York State Coalition Against Domestic Violence, uh, NISCADV, as they are known, uh, and some of the staff that are uh, present here today. They've, uh, as some of you may know, they've organized a statewide domestic violence prevention legislative advocacy and awareness day today and they have uh, brought together advocates and legal practitioners from across the state. Among the uh, people with us in the back of the chamber, Connie Neal, Executive Director, Seema Unjum, Director of Public Policy, Corbin Street, Director of Communications, Jennifer Clark, Director of Operations, Lorianne Castell, 
Director of Prevention, Fran Bailey, uh, Board of Trustees, uh, uh, board, the Board Treasurer and Director of the New Hope Center, and Anne Ellsworth, Niskadet Vice President and Executive Director of Putnam and Northern Western Westchester Women's Center. I would ask that you would welcome our guests and provide them the privileges of the house. Certainly, on behalf of Ms. Weinstein, the speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor, commend you on the, the work that you are doing, and hope that this time in Albany has been beneficial and will cause us to be a better state. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Mr. Barron for an introduction. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are honored here today to congratulate the statewide champions and the citywide champions of basketball, the Thomas Jefferson team, and they're up here from East New York, and we're very, very honored to have them with us. Carbonados are commonly known as black diamonds. The black diamond is the most precious strongest, oldest gem known to humankind. And the black diamond is precious and rich because it withstood all the pressure that the earth had to put on it. These are the black diamonds of East New York. And they were able to withstand the pressures of a community, as I often remind you all, are victims of a racist capitalist system that produces poverty and unemployment, yet they still rise. So we are very proud of them because not only are they athletically sharp, but they are also academically sharp. They have eight seniors, and all eight of their seniors are going to college. Going to college, all eight of them. So we thank the coaches, Coach Pollard, all of the coaches involved, Coach Jackson, we, we thank all of the coaches for teaching them the intelligence of the game of basketball. I attended the championship game and the semi-final game. They're not just athletically excellent, they were the most intelligent team on the floor. I watched how they played team defense. I watched how they selflessly played offense. And I watched how they outfought other teams that they played. So they're not just gifted athletes, because oftentimes we produce champions on the court and chumps in life. But they are champions on the court and champions in life. And we're very proud of that. And I also want to say to them, in reference to the intelligence, one player has a great quote, and I'm going to buy the book for all of them. Michael Jordan said, talent wins games. Intelligence and teamwork wins championships. However, as I do compliment Michael for that quote, I don't want you to be like Mike. Don't get no sneaker deal and sell us two $300 sneakers that we can't afford. I want you to be more sensitive to the issues in our community, which I wish Michael was. But those quotes are good from him. Finally, I take pleasure in this final part that one of our colleagues here was closely associated to the team that they beat for the championship. One of our colleagues here tried his best to guide that team to the championship. One of our colleagues here gave all the leadership he had in his gut to provide his team to the championship to beat my team from East New York, and that's Joe Morelli. <laughs> Joe Morelli, his team lost, and I think that's a reflection of his leadership. So this. <laughs> body, this body should consider, consider, just consider it, 
since I provided greater leadership, that I be the new majority leader. <laughs> Congratulations, Thomas Jefferson. On the same subject, Mr. Delon. Yeah, I too just want to add in and welcome uh, Thomas Jefferson, varsity boys basketball team to our chamber and to say that all of East New York and, and Bushwick and North Brooklyn are extremely proud of all of your achievements, including, let's not forget Charles, they beat Lincoln in the PSAL championship. To me, uh, watching all the stars that come out of Lincoln uh, for so long, and now we have our own brand that we can start to develop, to develop over the years through the leadership of Coach Bud Parlett, who, Charles, I consider responsible for all the uh, teamwork and intelligence, because without a strong leader, uh, that's not reflected on this team. So, but Coach Parlett, we commend you for the leadership that you have on all the lives of all these young men. We are extremely proud that eight, all eight of the seniors will be attending college, because as some members here know, your knees don't last you your entire life to play basketball. At some point in your life, your knees will give out, and you're going to need another skill in your life to uh, sustain your life after 40 years old. Uh, but we're, we're all proud of you. East New York is proud of you. Bushwick is proud of you. And just as a point of the per personal privilege, I won't name the player, but one of the players I, I had the privilege of growing up with his, his dad and uh, the privilege of playing football often with his, his, his uh, Uncle Rambo. Uh, to all my, my friends in Bushwick and, and East New York, you know, we're, we're certainly proud of this team and we're, we're proud of everything that they have accomplished and will accomplish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Certainly. On behalf of Mr. Barron, Mr. Delon, Mr. Morelli, the Speaker, and all the members, we congratulate you, uh, young men from Thomas Edison High School and the coaches, and the wonderful job that you have done. Um, your leadership in sports will undoubtedly lead to leadership in life, and we hope that you will take these lessons and make this a better state and a better world. Thank you so very much. Mr. Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As you know, May is the month of many uh, worthy clauses, and I am pleased today to have some guests here today as we designate May as Neurofibromatosis Month, known as, from this point forward, NF Month, because it is a mouthful. With me today uh, in the chamber are five individuals, uh, Vito Grasso, his daughter Rebecca Grasso, uh, Molly Williams, her husband Jeff Williams, and their son, Tanner Williams. Tanner and Rebecca are individuals who struggle with NF. NF is a disease that encompasses a set of distinct genetic disorders that cause tumors to grow along various types of nerves and can grow anywhere on or in the body. NF tumors can cause significant damage to nerves leading to hearing loss, visual impairment, balance issues, and other functional problems depending, of course, on the location of the tumors. Treatment has been very limited mostly to surgery to remove the tumors, often creating collateral damage as you might expect. Research for NF has focused on non-surgical treatments to reduce tumors and prevent formation of new tumors. It is interesting to note that NF research significantly overlaps with cancer research, and many drugs that have been effective in treating cancer are also effective in treating NF. And conversely, it is the hope that NF research will bring about not only treatment for NF, but also for many cancer tumors. It should be of notice to everybody here in the house that over 7,800 families are affected by NF in New York State. And the reality is, as Rebecca and Tanner might admit in their families as well, 
is that living with NF is like living with other chronic diseases. It is challenging and at times it is often discouraging. Our purpose in designating May as NF Month is to call attention to this devastating disease, to acknowledge the clinicians who treat patients and the scientists whose work provides hope for patients and their families. But in the greatest sense, it is recognized the people whose lives are affected by NF and whose valiant struggle to live full and productive lives in spite of their disease is an inspiration that we should all appreciate. So Mr. Speaker, as you often do, please extend the cordialities of the House to these fine individuals who truly are an inspiration to all of us. Certainly, on behalf of Mr. McDonald, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. This is the People's House. We hope that your efforts uh, to en enlighten us about the problems of this particular disease are going to be successful today, and that our, all of us walk away with a better appreciation of that which you have struggled with. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Ms. Fahey for an introduction. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I rise today to ask uh, that you welcome uh, yet another basketball team, and that is our University at Albany basketball team, uh, the women's basketball team, I should note, and it's with great pleasure that the Great Danes uh, here are here today to be recognized because this past season they won their fifth consecutive <laughs> e America East tournament championship, and it was the first time in program history that that was accomplished um, uh, by winning the NCAA tournament. And it was a, de uh, they, in doing so, they defeated the University of Florida 61 to 59, which uh, in a rather amazing and exciting finish. Uh, they finished their regular season with a 24-4 record and going into a 15-1 in the American East playoffs and with an overall record of 28 to five, including the, the tournament play. An extraordinary achievement all the way around. Uh, in addition today, if you would welcome their new coach. Uh, coach Abe will be remembered, um, the, our, their previous coach will be remembered uh, forever as uh, rather legendary in her half dozen years here. Uh, but I couldn't be more pleased to introduce Coach Joanna Burnaby McNamee known as Coach Mack, replacing Coach Abe. I love the way you do this, Coach, <laughs> or that we label our coaches. Uh, she's come to us as uh, the former head coach of the University of Pikeville, where she served as an assistant coach and recruiting coordinator um, at the University of Maryland. And there she helped win a national championship as well as at West Virginia University. We very much welcome her to the capital region and look forward to amazing continued success. And as was said earlier today, this is not just about amazing athletes. These are just tremendous women, tremendous scholars, and just tremendous representatives of the University of Albany. They come from all over the state and beyond. And it, what Coach Abe created was more than a basketball team. It really was, uh, they are examples and leaders across the UAlbany campus. So I, it's with great pride, and I would appreciate if you extend them the cordialities of the House. Thank you. Certainly. On behalf of Ms. Fahey, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome this extraordinary basketball team here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. Welcome, Coach. We are looking forward to your tenure here. Uh, this team has been a source of pride for the capital region for many, many years, and we continue to expect that to be the, the process for us. Ladies, we hope that your careers in college continue to be successful and your life careers will follow the same path. Thank you so very much.
Miss Jaffe for an introduction. One minute, Miss Jaffe, as the team exits. Shh. Proceed, Miss Jaffe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to interrupt the proceedings for the purpose of an introduction. I would ask that my uh, members of the Women's Club of Suffern please rise, stand up. Thank you. Uh, Eighty years ago, a group of women called the Salmagundi Society felt that their society should expand into a club with wider interests and membership. On October 18, 1920, the first meeting was held, a constitution was adopted, and the Women's Club of Suffern was born. The club objective was to provide and support, uh, support a center for social and mental culture, encourage education, increase citizenship, and other movements for the betterment of society. Shortly afterwards, a property was purchased and the clubhouse was built. One part of the clubhouse housed the first public library. The clubhouse also provided hot lunches to school children, which led to their first cafeteria. In addition, children's movies were shown on Saturdays, a, country, a county day school was started, health clinics were added, a station plaza was enhanced, and a park concert series was, were created. Although changing times have produced new and different demands, the club core object, objectives, such as providing child care services, educational opportunities, and issues responding to issues impacting the community continue. Ultimately, the Women's Club of Suffern is inspired to continue the heritage and encourage women to work together and to continue performing the same miracles that they have been doing for the past 88 years. I'm proud to introduce leadership in the Women's Club of Suffern. First, I want to introduce Mary Elena Chase, who is a leader in the uh, Women's Club of Suffern, also my sister-in-law. <laughs> Carol Ritter. Carol Yablonski. Krista Haverson, all members of the Women's Club of Suffern. They were joined by friends, Giuseppe Coco, Jim, Jim Riley, and Janet Riley. But these are extraordinary women. It's a large group, uh, many who could not be here today. But um, I, I, they are amazing in the work they do in the communities. And so, Mr. Speaker, um, I ask that you would provide and offer the cordialities of the House to our wonderful guests. Thank you. Certainly, on behalf of Ms. Jaffe, the Speaker, and all the members, we welcome you here to the New York State Assembly. We extend to you the privileges of the floor. We hope that this visit has been beneficial. We we'll certainly know that you please Ms. Jaffe in joining her today. We hope that you will have a great trip in Albany. Thank you so very much. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir, now that uh, Mr. Barron has suggested that I may be in my final hours as majority leader, um, I hope he'll remember short guys still need to be able to do something in this world. So, um, But um, on a serious note, it is now time to take up resolutions seating our new members, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Assembly resolution in relation to the election and seating of Jamie R. Williams as a member of the assembly from the 59th Assembly District. The clerk will record the vote. Mr. Speaker, if I might remind members, this is our first vote of the day, and uh, members who are in the chambers should be casting their votes, and those who can hear the sounds of our voice should make it into the chambers to cast their first vote of the day.
Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 91, noes 0. The resolution is adopted. Congratulations to you, Ms. Williams. Assembly resolution in relation to the election and seating of Ronald Castorina Jr. as a member of the Assembly from the 67, 62nd Assembly District. The clerk will record the vote. Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 87, noes 0. The resolution is adopted. Congratulations, Mr. Castorina. Assembly resolution in relation to the election and seating of Alice Council as a member of the Assembly from the 65th Assembly District. The clerk will record the vote. 